Are you ready? Do you have your headset on? Do you have your headset on? Yeah. All right. I couldn't tell. Do, wait, do you have it on? Yeah. All right, welcome to another Tech Tuesday. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Well, we got Dakota here. Uh, we couldn't find Charles this morning. I searched everywhere. I was driving all through Salt Lake and he was nowhere to be found, but I found Dakota. So. Um, he was sitting on the side of the road and I said, hey, come film a Tech Tuesday with us. And then he had 360 goggles and I said, let's do it. So we're here. What are we doing today? Today, we're talking about 360 cameras and uh, the various uses of them. We've got all sorts of different 360 cameras here talking about how to use them. You shoot a lot with you. 360 cameras. Yeah. You I did do. your school project with the 360 camera. Mm -hmm. You've done many projects for uh, local studios and different companies in town with mm -hmm. 360 cameras. It's true. So we said, hey, you got to come talk about 360 because maybe the viewers want to know more. Maybe they're thinking about buying a 360 camera. Maybe they're experienced in 360 and want to know what the next steps are or the possibilities in this industry. Yeah, definitely. Well, to get started, basically there's two different types of 360. There's 360 that you're going to reframe for social media or for YouTube. Uh, and then there's 360 that you're going to be watching back in a VR headset. So I've already taken mine off, so you're good. You, <laughs> you have yours off? Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing you're this tough. whole video. Oh, oh. <laughs> All right, so, well, now that I'm back into the video. Uh, back, in, back to reality. I thought you had yours on the whole time. I thought we were going to do that. No, <laughs> when you introduced me, I took it off. <laughs> well, hey guys. All right, well, we're here. Um, whoa. You brought something big. When you said 360 camera, I thought you were talking about these little guys, mm -hmm. which this guy's mine, that's yours. Mm -hmm. Pretty common. I know like Charles uses this a lot mm -hmm. um, off of his Trinity, he yeah. kind of rigs some stuff mm -hmm. uh, for social media, but what do you got here? Yeah, so basically the big difference uh, between these smaller cameras and this larger one is, is two main things. The first one is resolution, obviously. You need something 8K or higher when it's actually gonna be right in front of your eyes. With these guys, 5.6K, it's good resolution, but you're on your phone, so you don't need that much clarity. For these guys, it's right up in your face, so every pixel counts. Kind of so interrupting here, but so you're saying this is more for if you're creating content for, say, goggles, mm -hmm. and this is more if you're creating like social media style content. Absolutely, okay. yeah. These are more for like reframing, yeah, a lot of the behind the scenes content you see Charles do with his Trinity operating. Uh, and, and just lots of other types of scenarios. People put these on surfboards or if they're snowboarders or whatever you're into, these are really great, basically the next step in action cameras because you can probably everything and reframe later. Wouldn't put that on a surfboard? Would not put that on a uh, surfboard. Okay. Definitely wouldn't. I wouldn't even put that on a ski lift. I had a, a shoot I was doing where I was like, I can do this guy or this guy, but this guy costs about 10 times more. So if this breaks, that's much less of a liability. So let's go with a small one. That makes so sense. So this one's definitely way meant for controlled environments where you're going to be filming someone something that's going to be played back on a 360 headset. Too much movement in headset can kind of make people, you know, curl up a little bit. So you definitely want very controlled movement. Uh, but then the other big thing that sets this camera apart between these guys is basically the difference between monoscopic and stereoscopic. I so, have no clue what any of those mean. No worries, I'll break it down. So basically, monoscopic is like how like an ogre would see the world with just like one eye and you're just kind of scanning for information or kind of how like a camera, just a single single lens, okay. whatever. But we don't view the world that way. We nope. have two eyes that create depth because of the offset between the two. So this camera actually mimics that, captures an oh, image wow. for your left eye, captures an image for your right eye that's slightly offset and then puts the two together so you're actually creating depth. Interesting, in okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to wrap my head around that because obviously you have what is the degree angle of each camera? Is it 180 degrees per camera like these guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so these lenses are 180 degrees, right? Front and back, and it's stitched together for a full 360. These guys, I want to say it's closer to like 45 degrees. Oh, okay. And so by having six of them, we're having a considerable amount of overlap where like all of, you know, up, down, north, like everything is getting captured because of that overlap there. And then I see this toy over here that you brought in, and this excites me. <laughs> um, I love this. The fact that there is a 360 camera on a drone. Um, so when the first 360 camera ever came out, mm -hmm. I think it was the Samsung, the little white yeah, the Odyssey? ball, the yeah. Odyssey. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we did a video with them where we did a bunch of content and mm -hmm. then I brought it home and I was like, how can I take this one step further? And this was, I 
think when the Mavics, not the Mavics, uh, the Phantoms first okay. came out. Yeah, yeah. And I actually like hot glued and wired a 360 <laughs> drone on the bottom yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I'm going to be the guy with the first 360 yeah, this, this, camera this sucker, on a drone. Like, dangling from the bottom of it, basically. <laughs> so we have it on our YouTube channel, one of the first videos I've ever made. And we actually tried launching the drone and the 360 camera, like made it go all crazy. <laughs> yeah. And we crashed the drone and I'm catching it. And it was a whole thing. So this makes me really excited because it looks like it will actually work. Yeah, right. It fixes a lot of the innovations because yeah, once you're mounting a camera to a drone, you're offsetting your gravity, you're just causing all sorts of problems with your thrust and lift and like, just, just not the vibe. Not to mention your 360 shot is obscured because these guys have a really cool thing called like the selfie stick principle where anything directly underneath the camera just disappears. It's not even in the shot. Interesting. But that doesn't work when you're on a drone. You will still, if you bounce this to the top and fly it off, you'll still see this entire the bottom drone. of the you'll drone. You'll see the bottom of the drone. Whereas this guy, it stitches the drone out because the drone becomes the camera. Interesting. So, if you want those 360 shots in the air, this is probably your best bet. It's your best bet. And honestly, one of the things that I do with this that I think is really interesting is I'll put the footage from this because this is in comparison, resolution-wise, to one of these smaller cameras. You know, it's a smaller sensor, smaller lens. Um, but in order for it to still feel comfortable in a VR headset with something with higher resolution, I'll just use AI mm. uh, to, to kind of close that gap. And I can upscale this to 8K footage so that it matches. You can kind of tell it's not exactly the same, but you know, it gets you in the ballpark there where you're feeling comfortable watching, even though it is lower resolution, you can watch it in a headset and actually feel like you're flying <laughs> because you're allowed to look everywhere you want when you're watching this. You're not controlled by the reframe or what someone thought you should look at at this particular moment. My biggest thing when learning about 360 is I was like, where do I go to edit it? Mm -hmm. Obviously, Insta360 has their app, mm -hmm. but then I was messing around like I had some concert footage mm -hmm. and I was like, I could reframe in this app, but then I was downloading the footage, putting it into Premiere, and I felt like there's a lot of steps and it's getting pretty confusing. Yeah. When I was exporting Premiere, there's a lot of 360 options, or you can export your 360 footage into your normal frame like mm -hmm. a video. So there's so many possibilities. I see guys like Charles on Instagram posting stories of their 360 stuff mixed mm -hmm. with actual footage. How are they doing that? Where are they going for that? Try to sum that up to somebody who's like, what do I do with my footage? Yeah, definitely. I think you pointed out a really good thing, though, is that, like, I think most filmmakers know Murphy's Law pretty well, right? If something can go wrong, it will. Mm -hmm. I feel like VR filmmaking puts that to, like, 12. <laughs> like, yeah. the margin for error is really high. It's kind of a thin line you have to walk. Um, luckily, Insta360 makes fantastic software to help with all of these kinds of things. These smaller cameras use something called 360 Studio. Uh, and like you said, that's available on your iPhone or on your Android, or you can get that on your computer. And I think the computer one's a lot easier, yeah. especially if you're going to take that like pipeline all the way through to Premiere or any other of your NLEs that you like to edit in, using that computer kind of pipeline. Before I knew about that plugin, I sat one time in my living room with my iPad with all the footage linked <laughs> and was reframing with my iPad, <laughs> exporting, Sending to like my computer, downloading it to the drive. Taking a screenshot of this part. And then uh, a screenshot of it was this part. like oh. it was horrible until I found out they have a program that you can plug into Adobe software mm -hmm. and do that all within Adobe Premiere yeah. if you want, or do it all within Insta 360's software. Yes. Yeah, via totally. computer or phone. Or phone. Yeah, I really like the phone version. If you're like kind of a social media person and you just want to do it all on your phone, you don't have to use a computer. I love the feature where it basically takes your frame and then you act like you're in like Snapchat. Yeah, and, you're and then like, you just reframe it by like moving your phone. I think that's the coolest thing ever. It makes the like the movement feel way more natural, even though you've already shot everything and your footage already all exists in all 360 degrees. There'll be a time where Charles and I will be on set. He'll have his camera rigged right to his Trinity. Mm -hmm. We'll get a really cool shot. He'll pull it right up on his phone, reframe it to mm -hmm. that angle he wants that shot from, mm -hmm. and then download it as that clip from that angle, mm -hmm. save it to his photo reel, combined it with the other BTS, yeah. and within 10 minutes has a really cool BTS shot of him shooting on set. Don't let the editing process uh, scare you guys. Uh, the best thing to do is grab a 360 camera, mm -hmm. shoot some footage on it, and hook it up to your phone. Yep. I think it's a little more intimidating and scary than it actually is once you dive yeah. into it. I feel like once you understand like 
keyframing. If you're kind of like an editor and you've scaled things in or pan things around in a post-production software, you'll get it. It's yeah. keyframes. It's, it's, it's something you should kind of already understand. And so all you got to do is apply it to the logic of thinking of 360 degrees. So I'm brand new to 360. I'm looking about getting into it. I don't really know where to start. I'm mm -hmm. seeing Insta360 products on the board here. Mm -hmm. um, editing softwares, you know, there's so much that goes into this. It can be very overwhelming when you're getting into a new market. Mm -hmm. Where can someone start and what are some like little kind of point, pointers and tips that you could give them? Yeah, definitely. Um, I would say that for one, your phone actually has way more 360 capabilities than you even thought. If you're interested in 360, do more panoramic photos on your phone. Everyone's got a panoramic yeah. mode, and that essentially does more or less what this does and squeezes you know, the 360 degrees and kind of pulls it out into 180, like you take a globe and turn it into a map, something very, very similar. So that gets you more familiar with the process of kind of surveying an entire space for one given shot, as opposed to looking at one frame. Um, the next thing I'd recommend is if you like have a GoPro action camera and you're way more familiar with like the GoPro system, yep. GoPro makes a fantastic 360 camera. It's hella durable. I have literally blown up like three of them, <laughs> thrown on a car shredder. Like I have put those things through the craziest circumstances and they've totally survived. I love throwing cameras, so yeah. <laughs> I'm going to look at that one. So if you're looking for more like durable camera, maybe go for the GoPro one. But if you are interested in 360, the first thing I would say is, is pick up one of these Insta360 X3s. And one thing I did for my camera is um, this company, Charles, how do you say it? Nits, Nitsi? Nits, Nitsi? Nitsi. 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 Um, so Nitsi is a company, we use them with our Z cameras and a few of our bodies. They make great cages and accessories. Uh, they have this one for the 360 camera that I wanted to try that makes it a GoPro mount. Um, and it's all metal, pretty durable, it screws in there. and I thought that was kind of cool, but the lens is still exposed. And I don't mm -hmm. think there's a way to really get around that with a 360 camera mm -hmm. because it needs to be exposed and they bubble out. So Yeah, there actually are a couple of protectors that they do make that they kind of just like bubble onto that guy, almost like a contact lens. Okay. But when you're in your post-production part of it and you basically are identifying the front file and the back file and stitching that together into one file, there's a really specific option you have to hit to let them know you're using that lens guard. Okay. So that it can kind of compensate for that distortion. So some things to look out for, for sure. And then you created your senior capstone, mm -hmm. is that correct? Uh, with 360 footage where mm -hmm. you can actually watch your short film through a VR headset. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of possibilities. People have talked about this in the filmmaking world. Charles and I joked about it years ago that there's gonna be a day that you bring in a camera like this, set it in the middle, have your actors do all their stuff, and then you walk in, grab your camera, and that's the that's shot. The yeah. um, and the viewer could watch it as if they were somebody in, in the scene, in mm -hmm. real life. Um, there's been a few projects like that. Some have come out. I uh, don't really, her, her, I haven't heard of it being too successful, yeah. um, but I think it's a pretty cool concept. I think there's a lot of possibilities in this world. Mm -hmm. Everybody's seen like the real estate side of things where you can now like tour a home without leaving your computer. Totally. Um, I think there's going to be a lot more stuff that comes from the 360 world. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm excited to see where it goes. Is, yeah. is there anything you've seen kind of out there on the market that we should be seeing in the next few years? Mm -hmm. I know Odyssey just released their new headset, which is full pass through. So like mm -hmm. you can make things come out of the walls and it's really interactive. Yeah. I don't know. Do you have anything in your back pocket that you've seen on the market that we can yeah. know about? There's definitely a couple things I'm really interested in when it comes to like 360 and 360 films. Um, as someone that's a VR filmmaker, most people, their experience in headset is like Beat Saber. You know, yep. it's, it's doing something that's, that's computer generated, right? Yeah. It's like I'm seeing graphics and that's cool and all, but seeing like real life done in right in front of your eyes in VR and being able to interact with it and see it the way that you see your actual life, mm -hmm. like turning and like with freedom, that's something that creates a deep, deep sense of empathy with whatever you're witnessing in front of you. And so with like Apple's new headset on the horizon, you know, Apple never makes a Super move without expensive. being deeply, deeply calculated about what it's, what it's going to do to the industry. I'm excited to see what they're going to do. I'm not excited for the price point. I agree. I don't think this headset is necessarily going to be the one that consumers will buy. I think this is more like the iPad Pro mm. type deal. And this is where pr like prosumers and developers will probably be purchasing this headset. 
And based on the success of that, Apple will probably release a more consumer-friendly, budget-friendly option that has a lot of the same features. But basically, a lot of what that depends on is like, Instagram wouldn't have blown up if people weren't making content for Instagram. VR is the same way. We can have the platform for it, but if people aren't creating hmm. good quality films to be watched on these platforms, they, they kind of fall in the Or played, yeah. And I, I thought there was going to be a point here with 360 and like virtual reality where it did go more digital based as all like animated and created. Mm -hmm. um, like Unreal Engine is just mm -hmm. opening up the world for this kind of stuff. Totally. Um, but it is really cool to see people like you trying to push uh, real filmmaking with 360 cameras and what that could do for our industry. So it's sweet and I'm really excited to see uh, what more we can do. If you want to check out Dakota's Senior Capstone project, you can actually watch it in a VR headset. Where can they find it? Go ahead and hit me up on Instagram and I'll pri uh, DM you a private link to it. So it's not public? You don't have it for the people? It's not public, not public. <laughs> I, thought was, I thought it was out there. Well, uh, thank you guys. If you have a 360 project you've done, throw us a link in the comments. We'd love to check it out. If you have some stuff that you've learned, some tips and tricks, throw them in the comments. People would love to hear about it. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Please, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. See you guys. You thought I was going to throw it, didn't you? I kind of did. <laughs>